derm. I'm going to give this to you, sorry. You can All have right. this at the end. Okay, yeah. and inside the dermis, it's made up of blood vessels mm -hmm. and support structure, a bit like the foundations they have, the pipes and the support structures all sit here under the dermis. What are those cells? These cells mm -hmm. on the outside are called keratinocytes. All right. This is again challenging me to write. Carer, start with a C. Keratin. Keratinocytes is what they're called, these ones on the outside. And below here is all support structures underneath, um, holding it up, the dermis, okay? Mm. And in your type of EB, EB simplex, this type mm. of EB, little proteins, like Velcro proteins, which hold these cells together, the keratinocytes together in the epidermis, are not working quite right. So they're a bit, they're a bit faulty, slightly faulty, which means that when there's a bit of strain or pressure, put on the epidermis, it doesn't hold tight, it lifts up, so it lets a little bit of space come between it. Mm. Right. Now, when you get a blister here, when you get a blister forming in the middle of your epidermis there because of rubbing or friction, you get there, the more that you walk about on it, the more that you press down on it, the more this blister puts pressure on the outside and expands the cell. Right. So what you do by popping the blisters is absolutely the correct thing to do. Oh, it's the correct thing. It's absolutely the correct thing to do. Oh. And that's what we encourage people to do because otherwise... The you know, my mum always thought it was the wrong thing to do. No, every it's completely time. the wrong thing. All right. Because otherwise so they expand. Probably. All right. So my mum thought it was the wrong thing to do for no, the no, traversal with the needle. You're doing the right thing. So you're doing the right thing. What we probably would like you to do, though, would be to have some sterile needles. Oh, sterile needles. Yeah. Because right. otherwise... Do you ever have problems with infections in the feet? Um, no, not that I know, no, no. I so. <coughs> Okay, well sometimes people can get in problems of infections in these blisters, because the blisters, as you can imagine, sitting there with a pool of fluid is a lovely place for germs to live. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be careful, and so it might be worthwhile for us to ask to your GP to give you a prescription for needles, prescription needles and right. then a sharps disposal box to get rid of them, so you're they're able to cure. get rid of them. For these blisters, they're cured. Well, the, <coughs> the reason you have this problem, mm -hmm. so the reason you have it's come down in your family, hasn't it? So we That's know from right. your family tree that family tree, born. Yeah. It's come down in your family, which implies it's something in your genes. So we know that it's in your family tree. All right. And we know that there's two proteins. I'm going to write it the right way up because it'll be easier. Do you know what the two proteins are? They're called EB simplex. Mm -hmm. So it's two proteins here, which are like scaffold proteins, scaffolding proteins around the keratinocytes. Mm -hmm. They're ke ke keratins, so keratin proteins, and the two keratins that we're interested for EB simplex are keratin 5 and keratin 14, the two um, that we're interested for EB simplex, so keratin 5 and keratin 14. And keratin 5 and 14 make a pair, so they're like a left and a right foot. Right. Keratin 5 and 14 like to pair up together. So it's impossible when we look at you to know whether it's, it's the left foot or the right foot that's the problem in, in keratin, if you like, keratin mm. 5 and 14. And so we know that for one of those proteins we'll have a spelling mistake which you've inherited down the generations from your mother's side. It's inherited mm. down the generations from the mother's side. Mm -hmm. Now we know because it goes down the generations in a dominant pattern, so it goes down the generations the way it does, that because your brother is not affected, his children have no chance of being affected. So he he inherited a copy of the, of the gene which is no, doesn't have any faults on it. Right. Whereas both your sister and yourself have inherited a faulty gene, and your children and your sister's children will have a 50-50% chance of having the same condition. Right. For every baby that you have and for every baby your sister has, there's a 50-50% chance of having the same condition. Not a different form of EB, the same form same of EB. Form. It doesn't mm. get worse with the next generation, it stays the same. That's it. Oh, right. And that's important because if you look up Echodermalsis bullosa on the internet, mm -hmm. you'll find lots of different types of EB where it affects different areas in the skin here. Right. Can I keep that piece of paper? Yes, it's from oh. you. But your children will, it will not get a different type of EB. Oh, okay. Okay, so they'll get the same type of EB that you have. It would be worth us doing 
the gene test today so we can confirm to you. Gene test? What's that? Yeah, so we take a blood sample from you oh, today. Right. Okay. We send it away and we get sent up to a place in Dundee, mm -hmm. the lab, the gene lab, which looks at keratin in Dundee, and they'll test your keratin 5 and your keratin 14 gene. Do I have to go to Dundee as well? Would you like to? Do I have to? No, no, you oh, don't. Oh, no, okay. No. So your blood goes to Dundee, the blood does the travel. Oh, okay. The, um, the, there, there is a patient support group, mm -hmm. so for people who are affected by EB, and it's called DEBRA, the patient support group, and so you could look that up on the internet. Right. So DEBRA is a patient support group for people who have EB. Okay. Why is it called DEBRA? Um, uh, I forgot what the acronym is. Oh, it's an acronym. It's an acronym. Oh, right. it's, oh, right. it's called DEBRA because it's for people with EB. Oh, okay. It's got the EB in it. Oh, I understand that, yeah. Now, um, I think you've also got a little bit of athlete's foot, which is a fungal infection. What's athlete's foot, anyway? It's a fungal infection in the feet. So I'd like you to go and do a test for that oh, first. Oh, no. um, And so this is, you need to go up to this lab, mycology lab. What, today? Yeah, right now. And they'll do it straight away.